Approximately three decades ago, researchers studying planet Earth, and specifically various micrometeorites arriving to planet Earth from various locations, discovered that for some reason, quite a lot of them were coming from a certain location in the night skies. A variety of micrometeorites appeared to be coming from some kind of a dominant source somewhere out there. And a few studies, some of which you can find in the description below, basically discovered that it seems to be coming from a direction of a star system in the constellation of Pictor. And there is really only one star that's just really bright here, Beta Pictoris. And after years and years of studies, researchers realized that this appears to be the main source for quite a lot of micrometeorites on our planet. Here we're talking about tiny particles, over 20 micrometers in size, arriving to Earth with very high velocities, because they left the star system at 25 kilometers per second. Although exactly what ejected them is still not clear. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss Beta Pictoris once again, because of additional discoveries that were recently made using James Webb Space Telescope, but also because, as you just discovered, this is not just some star out there, this star physically affects planet Earth at all times. And so trying to understand exactly what's happening here, or what's happening around the star, can obviously help us understand how this may affect planet Earth as well. But first here, I actually wanted to start with this beautiful animation. I've showed this to you previously in one of the videos in the description, but this essentially shows us a beautiful time lapse of one of the planets of Beta Pictoris orbiting the star. This is actually one of the few planets that has been directly observed around any star system, and because this planet has been studied for almost 20 years, it allowed researchers to create this beautiful time lapse. And so first, what exactly is this star, and what exactly is happening here? Well, it's a young star system, possibly about 20 to maybe 25 million years old, and a star system that's still forming a lot of planets, and has a lot of activity around its protoplanetary disk. And though two planets have already been confirmed here, it's expected that a lot more are still forming. The two confirmed planets are both gas giants, and this is actually how we believe planets must have formed in the solar system as well. Gas giants first, ice giants later, terrestrial planets at the end. But we've also been able to observe the disk directly in the process of discovering that it seems to have at least two parts, with the second one potentially produced by a planet orbiting in a slightly different inclination, producing a misshaped disk. And actually, some of the most recent observations by the James Webb didn't just confirm this disk, they also discovered additional shapes, including the one you see right here, scientists now refer to as the cat's tail. Moreover, the researchers also discovered that these two disks are different in temperatures, suggesting that they have different materials. With all of this also suggesting an enormous amount of interaction, which potentially leads to a lot of collisions, and most importantly, a lot of the stuff gets ejected. And it's the ejection of the material that's most likely causing some of it to eventually arrive to planet Earth, bombarding our atmosphere and delivering a lot of new materials. Although intriguingly, this is not the only such star around us, because back in 1983, researchers actually found several stars emitting extra infrared light that we now refer to as Vega-like, with the three other stars being Epsilon Eridani, Fomalho, and Vega itself. And so all four stars potentially have something similar going on. But in case of this particular star system, it's actually the disk's orientation. It's basically facing us sideways, and so a lot of dust is orbiting in such a way that if it does get ejected from this disk, it's kind of headed into one of the directions along this disk. And it just so happens that planet Earth is in the way. Although this disk might be a little bit different, it seems to be abundant in carbon as opposed to oxygen, which scientists have suggested might produce carbon planets as opposed to planets like Earth, which are enriched in oxygen. And so studying this disk can actually help us understand how various terrestrial planets form and why the composition of certain terrestrial planets is so different. I mean, one of the main reasons planet Earth is so unique and is even able to maintain liquid oceans on the surface is actually because of the composition of its minerals. The right combination of carbon, oxygen, silicates, and a lot of other stuff forms a lot of important minerals able to create necessary conditions for life. But carbon planets might be something different, and oceans might not be possible here. Which is why studying such systems can help us understand what's going on out there. And so when it comes to planetary formation, 
This is basically a go-to star that will hopefully help us understand everything. Especially because in the last few decades there's been a lot of signs of different types of interactions, including detections of comets, and possibly even evaporating comets, that have been reported by scientists in 2019. But now we have an intriguing new discovery that was actually just made by comparing some of the older pictures with some of the images from the James Webb. And here it's once again something detected inside the disk, and something that does confirm active planetary formation. And here the researchers focused on the changes in energy. In this case all of this energy is actually emitted by various dust grains. And so back in 2005, the observations from the Spitzer Space Telescope, the predecessor telescope prior to the James Webb, revealed unusually high energy in two different wavelengths, implying heat emitted by various crystalline silicates, and specifically various minerals that we usually expect around young stars. Yet when observed by James Webb extremely recently, nothing was visible anymore. And this was not some kind of a mistake in the data. These emissions were there 20 years ago, and they were not there now. And so when the researchers collected data with the Spitzer telescope initially, they actually assumed that this was some kind of a natural result between asteroids continuously colliding and grinding materials, potentially producing elevated emissions in certain frequencies or something that was basically replenishing materials of certain size. Yet the observations from the James Webb imply something else. This was probably a one-off event, and specifically some kind of a cataclysmic collision that essentially happened 20 years ago. With the collision pulverizing the bodies, producing an enormous amount of dust, but after 20 years, essentially dissipating. And because the dust in this case was clearly not replaced, right now this is the best such explanation. And based on the amount of material detected emitted by these collisions, it actually implies a collision between two relatively massive objects. Not planetary objects, but definitely some kind of planetesimals, possibly similar in mass to Ceres, equivalent in size and mass to typical dwarf planets. And because this event produced so much dust, and also because this probably happens quite a lot here, this potentially answers the question of why planet Earth receives so much dust from this location, while also showing us what most likely happened in the early solar system as well. And so the observations from the star system doesn't just teach us about how the solar system evolved and how planets like planet Earth formed as well, it also shows us something much more important. An important source of space dust that's coming to our planet every single second in huge amounts. And though naturally we still have no idea how this influences planet Earth, it's really studies of star systems like this one that can help us understand this a little bit more. And so yeah, this is not one of those studies that's purely astronomical in nature, this is actually something that's definitely affecting our planet, but in ways we still don't understand. Which is actually why we'll come back and talk more about Beta Pictoris in some of the future videos as well, but also check out some of the previous videos in the description about previous examples that basically talk about discoveries from the last few years. On that note, once we learn something else, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.